righteous God. You are a merciful God. You are a forgiving God. You are the great I am. God, we thank you, Father, for blessing us with another day. Father, we thank you for blessing us tonight, Father. We thank you for all that you have for us. God, I ask that you handcuff me in the spirit. And Father, move how you want to move. God, bless the souls in the house tonight and those who are watching us our live, Facebook Live. God, we thank you that we can worship you on a day like this. So God, we ask you, Father, Father, just to move and have your way. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And all that agree, give God your highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so. And amen. Welcome to Chosen Ministries. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for all you who came out tonight. God held up the, uh, the rain for us, so we're going to rock it out. We got um, Pastor Artemis here with us with his lovely wife, and they're going to bless us in whatever way the Lord leads them. Uh, we're going to start off just with a worship song, and then we'll let him take over, and then we will then uh, get into the Word and, and worship God, and then we're going to go on home. Amen. 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 Amen.
We hope to rock with you all tonight. We're going to be blessed tonight. Uh-huh. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Power. Yes, Lord. There is power. Bless your name, God. In the name of Jesus. Bless your name, Father. Power in the name. Yes, God. Uh-huh.
I know we're used to singing songs that were penned out by writers, but sometimes the song of the Lord is the best song you could ever sing. And the song of the Lord is simply just when he's speaking to your heart. And right now, I know he's not just speaking to me because he's omnipresent, which means he talks to everybody at once. And I don't have to try to figure out what that means or what it looks like. Because I know I hear the presence of the Lord. I sense the presence of the Lord. I hear the Lord. So whatever he's saying to you at this time, that's just what he wants to hear from you right now.
or is your trust in God, in the kingdom of God? You have to believe who your source is. People suffer greatly with COVID. If you didn't um, suffer physically, you may have lost time on your job. Your spouse may have lost time on your job. Your children have been out of school. We all took a hit somewhere. But in all of that, I have come to know God and trust Him even more to be my source. My job is just a resource. What's in the bank is just a resource. It's just a resource. And to trust God as your source. He's your source. We get caught up in depending on our paycheck every week, knowing what's coming in and out. But there is such a peace. When you know you can trust God. If you have nothing, you can trust God. If you have a lot, you can trust God. He's going to sustain you no matter what's going on. Because that's his promise to his children to never leave you, to never forsake you. We're never begging for bread. Every need is already supplied. The provision is already there. The healing is already there. We're waiting on the manifestation. God has already fixed the problem. He's already the solution. God is already all. And if you get caught up in what you see and just what your mind can, can come up with, you'll miss God. You'll miss the big thing that he wants to do. You'll miss the, the miracle that he wants to do. Take God out of a box. Take him out of the small constraints of your mind. What he wants to do is bigger than what you can imagine. What he wants to do is grander than the scale that you have it on. You think too small. You think too small. Why? Because we don't truly recognize God for who he is. He don't need us. He doesn't need us. That's why life is a gift. Left it to the sea to give him glory. Left it to the wind to give him glory. But he created us. And that's a gift. And if he can create you and all the intricate things that go into the human body and how we're developed and how things work, why do we keep our, our, our expectations so small? Why are we believing God for uh, just a raise instead of the promotion? Why are we content with just getting by and I'm just happy to make it week to week, day to day? No, no, no. We're kingdom citizens. Whatever we want, we have the authority to speak and it be so. Whatever we desire, we can tell our Father, and He'll grant us the desires of his, our hearts according to His will. You'll stop thinking small when you get an understanding of what His will is for your life. And you don't get an understanding without intimacy. You don't get the understanding without relationship. You can't just come into church week after week, hear the sermon, and that be it. You have to stay each and every day. You have to stay praying each and every day. You have to eat the word each and every day because when things happen around you, you cannot be so easily faltered. You cannot be so easily swayed by what's going on. You have to be able to stand still and know that he is God. You have to be able to stand still and know that greater is he that is in you than anything in this world. You have Thank you. 
one. You are the mighty one. You the one that sits high and look low. You the one that can intervene and turn it around. You are him. So God, we give you honor. When honor is due, Father. You are long overdue for honor, Father. You got pastors taking your, your honor, God. You got servants taking your honor, God. Oh, God, you are overdue with your honor. And, God, we honor you, Father. We honor you. How great is our God. He's so great. He's so righteous. He's so honorable. Oh, God, we thank you. For those of you who need to take communion tonight and didn't get a chance to take it on Sunday, please let us know if you have not received your communion. Yes, Lord. What's your name, God? Yes, God. As we know, communion is a sacred uh, opportunity to give ourselves to the Lord. Um, this is an opportunity for us to search ourselves, to ask God to examine us. Is there anything in us that keeps us out of his will and his way? Is there anything in you that you need to go and repent for? We will take this opportunity to do so. Father, examine us, Lord. Examine us, Father. For those of you that are online and you want to take the sacraments with us, get you a cracker and some juice. Go ahead and ask God to search you. As Jesus prepared his disciples, he gathered them in the room and he reminded them that every time we take the bread and he broke the bread, he said, remember this as his body. He sacrificed himself for us. He laid himself on that cross and he took that, that sacrifice because God said he's going he's gonna to bring the lamb. He was going to bring the sacrifice. So for those of you who are taking it, break the bread. We bless the bread and we eat the bread. This cup represents his blood. And we know the Bible says that the blood washes, the blood heals, and the blood still works. The blood still works. So we bless the blood. In Jesus' name, and we drink together. And God, we thank you. As minister said, Father, this is a season for us to honor you. This is a season for us not to grow weary, Father. This is a season, God, for us to trust you in such a time like this. God, just as the prophet did, he said, you can go first and, and pray to your God. You can go first and do what, what you need. And then I'm going to call on my God. Saturate the ground. I want it nice and wet. So when my God comes and lays down the fire, you will know the God that I serve. And God, that's the God that we need to tell our brothers and sisters in Christ about, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do, dear God. We thank you, Father, for how you love, Father. We thank you for how you move, God. And it's in Jesus' name, Lord, that we pray this prayer. Amen. We will be in the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. Beginning at verse, uh, chapter 1, at verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4. And it reads as follows. Then the Lord, uh, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Please stand for the reading of the word. Thank you. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all, the, all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Uh, verse 8, Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hands and touched, uh, touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. 
verse 10, see I have, see I have this day set uh, you over to the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Verse 11 says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to try not to stick to these notes, Elder Jack. <laughs> Let the spirit move. So as we see that Jeremiah um, is this prophet that God calls forth. And, and God set forth a divine order to call forth in Jeremiah for his assignment. God had already thought about uh, Jeremiah before he was even formed in a womb. And I'm here to remind you all that God has already thought of you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Nothing under the sun uh, of God can happen by mistake. God is reminding us in such this, this, this season where there's a lot going on, there's some moving around, there are people who are fighting at each other's necks, and we just have everybody putting their mouth on the situation. God reminded me today, he said, my daughter, I need you to stay the course. So minister, everything that you were speaking, uh, I know is from the Lord. He said he needs his people to stay the course. This is the season where truth must come forth. He reminded me, he said, at the beginning of the year, you had a lot of preachers and false prophets talking about this was the year of this, that, and the third. He said, my daughter, this is the year of truth, and this is the year that I will be honored. So God is calling forth his people who have been chosen and set aside by him, who he had known them before they were formed in the womb, that I am calling you forth in such a time like this. I need people who are clean. I need people who are uh, faithful to me. I need people who will give me honor because my honor is due. So God told Jeremiah, this is your time. I, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. Jeremiah felt he was too young and too inexperienced. However, God corrected him and said, do not say that I am a youth. Jeremiah was young. However, he was ready for what God had called forth in his life. Some of you may feel I'm too old. Some of you may feel that I'm not experienced enough. And some of you may feel that it's taking too long. But God says, baby, I have you in a ripe season. This is your season for you to stand forth. This is your season for you to believe that I knew you before you were formed in the womb. Jeremiah was young, but God knew that he had already developed that thing inside of him. He was a prophet, and, and you will know in the word that God trained his prophet how to see. And I'll go into that as I get through the sermon. God is calling those who are willing, waiting, and right standing with him. He's looking for those who are willing to go by his word. He's looking for those who are waiting on him to come, and those who will right stand with his word that will not compromise what he has called over your life. We are in a prevalent season where God is saying, who is willing to move in obedience? Who are those who are waiting on me as those that waited in the back season? David waited on God. Moses waited on God. Daniel waited on God. And God says, I need the, 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 the today Daniels, the, the today Davids, and those who are waiting on me today. Not those who are waiting on their stimulus check. I'm looking for those who are waiting on me and my glory. I'm looking for those, as minister said, that's not living from day to day, check to check. I'm looking for those who understand that the overflow comes from me. God is looking for those who are willing, who are waiting, who are right standing with him. This is not your year to keep up with the Joneses. This is not your year to argue with the Joneses. And this ain't your year to debate with the Joneses. This is the year for you to know who God has called you to be. This is not your year for you to think about it. God says, my daughter, my son, I have called you forth in this hour. Jeremiah knew that he was not experienced, but God liked the humbleness that's in him. God is saying, I am looking for humble people in this hour. I'm looking for those who can see, as minister said, that you can see the fruit that God has birthed inside of you, that you can see the worthiness that he has put inside of you, that you can see the plans that he has put inside of you. This is your season to accept your call. And I forgot to give y'all the title. God has chosen you. God has chosen you. God has chosen you for this season. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
We're in a detrimental time where God has set aside those who will bring forth his word. Jeremiah was a prophet that had an assignment that he had to bring forth order. Jeremiah came, went time after time after time telling the people to turn from their wicked ways. And they paid Jeremiah no attention. Jeremiah at one point got caught in his feelings and God says, listen, my son, I've already told you that I got this planned out. When you look at that scripture, I knew you before you were formed in the womb, which means he already thought about you and thought about the assignment that you were attached to before you were even conceived. So God is saying in this season, I need for you to understand I knew you before you were formed in the womb. I already had a plan worked out you. I already had you going to different assignments. I knew you before you were formed in the womb. You didn't just get into school. You didn't just get that job, baby. I already planned that out for you. I knew you before you were formed in the womb. You didn't get out by that grace. You got out by my grace. I knew you before you were formed in the womb. I knew what was going to happen. I knew who was going to backstab. I knew who was going to clap. I knew you before you were formed in that womb. God says this is your season for you to trust him. He said, listen, I know everything that is happening in this earth. Nothing happens by happenstance under my authority. I approve it, I deny it, and I bless it on this way. But you got to trust the God that you serve. We've been talking about racism for the past couple of weeks, and we've been peaceful protesting. And God says, my daughter, peaceful protest is not going to stop it. It's going to be a little bit prayer, a little bit understanding, a little bit order, a little bit right standing with me that's going to help all of this. It's not going to be you dressed up talking about you going to uh, stand for this person. It's about you trusting what God has called you to do. Yeah. But God says, you got to understand, you got to let that simmer in your head that I knew you before before you were formed in the womb. Uh -huh. Jeremiah didn't understand the, 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 the assignment. He didn't understand what God was calling him to. God says, I'm looking for pure people that understand their purpose. I'm looking for those who will go beyond their Facebook posts. Your purpose goes beyond what you just say. You got to put your money and your move where your mouth is. God says, in this season, you got to trust what he's saying to you. You got to trust in how he's moving in you. You got to trust in how he is trying to develop you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. God says you got to acknowledge who you serve. You, if you acknowledge who you serve, then he will make room for the acknowledgement. Amen. God says, are you willing? Are you waiting? Are you right standing with him? When we look at verse, uh, verse 12, uh, the Lord says, I'm sorry, verse 11. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And, and I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. God says, my daughter, I need you to slow down with that, that verse because I need for the people to understand I bring forth what I call forth. Amen. I bring my camp. I bring my army. I bring my lesson. I bring forth what I call forth. See, the prophets in that time had to know the word of God before they can speak the word of God. Amen. They had to be in relationship with God before they say, thus says the Lord. God says, in this time, we don't know the word, so we can't tell real from fake. We can't tell a cubic zirconia from the real diamond. That is perfect and pressure in a diamond. A CZ may look good, but baby, it ain't the same. It don't carry the same weight. It don't have the same pressure. There's a difference when you are in relationship. Jeremiah could not speak God's word prophetically without seeing it first. See, you can't see uh, the walk and the assignment until you get in your word and build up your faith. No, you can't do it alone. No, you're not going to be able to accomplish it by yourself in your own strength. You got to see the word of God working in your life. You have to get those scriptures. I don't care if you don't understand the scriptures. Baby, Google it. Say, Google, give me commentary. I need the commentary on he knew me before I was formed in the womb. I need to understand in God. I need to know when you're talking to me, Lord. I need to know when you're moving, God, because you said you knew me before I was formed in the room. Oh, you can't walk by faith until you build your faith. You're not going to know what faith look like until you build that mustard seed up. Some of y'all ain't even got a pinch of a, a little salt thing. God says, baby, I need you to get a pinch of faith so I can build this thing up inside of you. I need you to get a pinch of faith so I can get you prepared. 
for what is going on in your life. I need you to have some faith. I need you to maintain your focus. Don't allow the enemy to distract, distract you. Distraction calls deception. You can't tell the difference between the two when you are distracted. See, the devil wants you to focus over here so he can take you off of your destiny. This morning, I got in my vehicle and, and my tire pressure was low. I told Elder J, I had 10 places to be today. And I got in the car and the tire pressure was low, so I stopped at one store and I put some, some air in my tire. It was lower than when I got in. I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong? So I went on to my, my appointment and I left and I came back. The tire was still low. So God began to talk to me. He said, my daughter, the pressure is uh, low in the tire because the devil's trying to distract you. See, when you got pressure on you, the devil's trying to distract you. So I had to go to the gas station and plug up so I can get plugged into the Lord. And then my tire built back. Up. And baby, I was back on my destiny before God. God said you got to be able to handle the pressure in your life. The pressure will say that your pressure is low. The pressure will try to keep you off your destiny. But what you got to do is you got to plug up and get your air filled up. You got to get your faith built up. You got to get your mind right. They call Shaddai, I see the old sire. You got to get your mind right before the Lord. God says you got to know the season that he has called you in. See, there's too many people walking around in the wrong jurisdiction. They call Shaddai, I see the old sire. You over here protesting, and baby, he trying to get you over here in prayer. You got to know the jurisdiction that you belong in. He didn't call you to protest. He's called you to be in relationship with him right now. You can't protest for them because you got to learn how to pray for yourself. Oh, you got pressure on you. The devil is waiting for you when you wake up. Oh, the devil is looking for you. He's waiting for you to get up so he can try to play with your mind. He's waiting for you to have a Jeremiah flesh, uh, a moment. Jeremiah said, my Lord, I'm too young for this. I ain't equipped in a word like that. I understand what I'm equipped. But God says, listen, my son, don't say that you're too young. Don't say that you're not waiting. You're not ready because you're willing and you're waiting and you are right standing. You are right right now for what I, I need you for. You got to understand that your assignment is not going to be easy. Your assignment is going to take some setbacks, some setups, some disappointments, and some I don't know moments. Come on, somebody. I don't know what is going on right now. But God says, my son and my daughter, I need you to fully trust me in this season. I need you to be authentic. I need you to be custom made. I need you to be different. I am looking for the people who have been lost and forgotten about, but I need the prophets and I need the teachers and I need the leaders who are, are going to stay with the sound doctrine that I have called forth. God then began to give me some different analogies. There's this book called White Fragility by this woman. I just got the book a couple of weeks ago when I was in school and it's talking about, you know, the injustice that's going on. Now, I ordered the book because the lady told me to order the book and I put it up in the bookshelf. I was like, I'll read it sometime, not right now. Lord, behold, it called I see it on The riot started. And the next thing I know, this woman's book is all over the internet. Everybody's buying the book, looking for the book, trying to get their hands on the book. And God said to me, my daughter, you better be ready for your season. Your book may sit on the shelf. Ain't nobody thinking about your look, your book. But baby, somebody looking for your book now. Then he took me over to Lysol. He said, baby, you should be able to buy Lysol by a pack. Can't nobody find a can of Lysol. God says, you better stay the course with your assignment and be ready for your blessing. God says, the Lysol, you can't find no Lysol. He says, the N95 mask, ain't called Shaddai, I see that Osiah. Oh, that nobody was paying those masks no attention. Now you fighting for an N95. God says, you got to know your birthing season. You got to know your preparation season. And you got to know your pulling season. God says, you got to know your birthing season. You got to know your preparation season. You got to know your pulling season. What's pulling season, Pastor? It's called pull up in your blessing. God says, you got to pull up in your blessing after you prepare for what the lesson is. Amen. Jeremiah knew that he had a huge assignment. Uh -huh. He had a huge assignment. Jeremiah had a little weight under his belt when you get to chapter 17. Go to chapter 17 verse 7. Chapter 17 verse 7 it says, Blessed is the man who trusts 
in the Lord whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes. But its leaf will be uh, green and it will not be anxious in the years of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. Jeremiah was planted in his relationship with God. And God says if we trust him in this season, we can trust the plans that he has for our lives. God only births things inside of you that you cannot accomplish on your own. He births things inside of you that you're going to need his full revelation and direction on. But you have to get in a committed relationship with God. you got to quit treat him as a side piece. You know, you get with him on Monday, Wednesday, and maybe on Friday. God says, baby, you need to talk with me each and every day because you need to understand when you are planted and when you are rooted inside of me, fear has no way in your life. When you are planted and rooted in your relationship with God. Fear has no way in your life. I used to be scared by the police. I ain't even feel, I ain't even uh, 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 speeding. I'd be looking, oh Lord, oh Lord. Now I just cruise on back. I, I'm, I'm cruising on back like I don't care because my mind is in a whole nother place. God says, I need you to get your mind in a whole nother place. I've called some to protest. I've called some to pray. I've called some to fix problems behind the scenes. And I've called you all to be committed to your assignment. I need you to stay Stay on your post. My girlfriend of mine, she was uh, praying today and she talked about Nehemiah. Nehemiah stayed on the wall. Nehemiah was not going to be confused by his enemies. Nehemiah paid his enemies no attention. He said, look, I got this assignment. I got to stick to this assignment and I cannot entertain what you're talking about. So God said, stop entertaining uh -huh. distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop entertaining distractions. Yeah. Jeremiah was built in his faith. Jeremiah understood that the assignment was so much greater and larger than him. Imagine yourself on this assignment and you are trusting God. You are asking God to give you some revelation. And God is saying, I'm going to just give you a little bit. Because he has to give you a little bit at each time so you don't lose your vision. Because when you start to look at God, this is too big for me, then you don't stay the course. He says, I got to give you a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. I need to begin to work some things up out of you. I got to work some hurt up out of you. I got to work some fear up out of you. I got to work the things up out of you that don't belong. Yeah, yeah. In Jeremiah, uh, what, what chapter is this? 26. This is the last scripture. Jeremiah chapter 26. Jeremiah has to go to the people and give them a prophetic word that is a word that's of order and it's not, you're going to get a house car and you're gonna be a millionaire. Jeremiah had to give them a word that God is gonna strike you down if you don't get in order. And, and Jeremiah then gets before the people. In verse 13 it says, Now therefore amend your ways and your doings and obey the, the voice of the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent concerning the doom that he has pronounced against you. Verse 14, as for me, here I am in your hand. Do with me as uh, seems good and proper to you. Verse 15, but, now, but know for certain that if you put me to death, you will surely bring innocent blood on yourselves, on this city and on its inhabitants. For truly the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Jeremiah was at a point in his assignment and his walk before God. God, that he was not going to compromise. It was at one point God had to drag him to the assignment, but he stayed in relationship and built his faith before God that Jeremiah said, listen, if y'all kill me, that's on y'all. You know, my time here is up. So God is saying in this season, I need for you all to be so committed to the assignment that regardless of what may come your way, that you say the blood be on your hands. I can't move off my post because I need the blood to be on your hands. I got to stay the course. And God says, Maya, let me show you who, were, who was willing to stay the course. He said, David was caught working uh, with the shep uh, with the sheep. And when I called him for he didn't he didn't become king right at that time. He didn't become the, the chosen one at that time. I prepped him through the process. Moses was caught working with the sheep, with the, for his father's sheep. And God says, I'm going to use you. God says, in this season, I need you to be working and waiting on me. David and Moses waited. Daniel was waiting and working before the Lord and God still blessed him. God says those who wait on him. Joseph had to wait on God. He got sold by his brothers. He had to go to jail. He was uh, committed. Uh, he was uh, give, given a crime that he did not commit and went to jail and waited. J Joseph could have been in a place where he was upset and frustrated 
frustrated before God, but Joseph found his way to work. Yeah, yeah. God says, baby, I'm trying to build y'all up in this season, but the first distraction you get, you want to give up. He says, I need to build my people up who've been called by my name that won't be um, that will be unmovable and unshakable in their faith. Joseph stayed the course. He stayed the course. As I said in one of my sermons, there's purpose in the pit, amen? Uh -huh. There's purpose in isolation. There's purpose in preparation. There is purpose in your destiny. But God says he needs you to stay the course. Uh -huh. How do I get right standing with God? You got to be honest about where you are with the Lord. You got to be honest about where your appetite is with the Lord. Some people can only handle one scripture a week. It's okay, but you just got to be honest with God with that. God says wherever you are, he will meet you where you are. But you got to get honest in your relationship with him. Amen. This is not a season for you to keep lying to yourself. It's a season for you to be, continue to be distracted. God says there has to be purpose beyond your post. There has to be purpose beyond your post. So how do I get purpose in my life, Pastor? You get purpose in your life by, number one, giving God your yes. Yes. Yes, Lord, to your way. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your alignment. Yes, Lord, to your assignment. God says you got to stay the course. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Moses had his assignment, but his assignment did not become fruitful until years later. Imagine being on an assignment for 40 years, but then nothing happens until that 40th year. God says you have to wait the course for the assignment. Yeah. There is purpose as he builds inside of you with the assignment. So Jeremiah had to learn that there had to be things broken off of his mind and broken off of his body and broken out of his heart. We have to renew the mind each and every day because if you don't renew your mind, it starts to wonder. A wondering mind is a, a, is a reckless mind, amen? God says this is not your season to be lost and wondering in the wilderness. This is your, your season to get to your post. You got to look for your post. This is your season for you to understand what God is calling you to. God called Jeremiah. God assigned Jeremiah. God covered Jeremiah. God draw. He drew near to Jeremiah. God spoke to Jeremiah. God, he lifted up Jeremiah's prophetic life. God showed Jeremiah what happens when you stay close to him. God says, my son and my daughter, if you stay close with me, if you walk with me, if you talk to me, if you pray to me, if you give me the honor that is due with me, I'm going to show you how I elevate you in this season. I'm going to show you how I will show you what is the purpose in your life. But he needs us to walk with him. He needs us to draw near to him. He needs for us to be real with him. A pastor was saying earlier that sometimes we're used to tracks and then things like that. God is saying in this season, there will be a new sound from heaven that you have not heard before. A new thing, a new wine into new wine skin. You can't look for the new beat because it ain't came out yet. God needs the willing vessels that will give the beat and will give him the honor. Come on, somebody. He's looking for those that will get the beat and give him the honor. God says, I got to clean the kingdom up. I got to clean the mind up. I got to clean the body up. In this season, I'm looking for those who will stay the course. I'm looking for those who will come to church for me and not for the ministry. I'm looking for those who will come to church not for the pastor, but come for me. I'm looking for those that are looking for me to build them up in this season. God says there is work for you to do. There is work for you to do. But you got to be committed to your post and your assignment. Yes, God. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Lord. So in this season, God wants you to get before him. And he wants you to start thinking about the things that you have not done. This is your purpose and your season for you to move and go. Mm -hmm. This is your season for you to write down the things that you need to let go. For those who are walking around and hurt and distracted. God says, you need to leave it at my feet. The music that a uh, pastor was playing earlier, the music that he was playing earlier is that it was a, it was a tune from the Lord. It was a, it was a tune from God. God saying, you have to know my sweet, my sweet nothings. You have to know when I am speaking. You have to know when I am moving. This is your season to break out and break through. This is your season to say, God has chosen me. This is your season to say, God has picked me. This is your season to say, he's already figured it out. This is your season to say, he's already worked it out. This is your season for you to trust what he's doing in your life. God says, listen to my tune. My son and my daughter, listen to my tune. I have chosen you for this assignment. 
you are right and ready to go. I need those who will not dilute my prayer. I need those who will not dilute my word. I need those who will not dilute the purpose I have called over their life so I can move like never before. I need those who will give me praise and worship. I need those who will lay on their face. I need those who will shout my name. I need those who will come with my name. I need those that will encourage themselves. I need those that will talk to themselves. I need those who will be obedient. I need those who will be committed. God says, I need those in this season. I need those protesters. No justice, no peace. Baby, when you don't have justice and right standing with God, you ain't going to have peace in your life. So you got to walk around your own life and say, no justice, no peace. I need peace in my life. No justice, no peace. I can't, I can't protest for you today. I need justice and peace in my own life. God says, baby, you need justice and peace in your own life. You need to protest for your faith. Come on, somebody. You got to protest for your faith. You got to say, I don't know what my faith is, but I got to protest for my faith. I'm protesting for Lord right now. I'm protesting for my faith. I'm going to nursing school right now, and I got to protest for my faith. I'm protesting for Elder J right now. I'm protesting for my family. God says, baby, are you willing to protest for yourself? Are you willing to protest for yourself? Are you willing to pray for yourself? God says, no justice, no peace. He says, baby, I'll handle that over there. But I need to handle you right here. No justice, no peace. You ain't going to have no peace in your mind. No plead, no peace in your sleep. If you don't get justice and right standing with God. God says, I need, I'm looking for those who are willing and waiting. And what? Right standing with me. You got to get peace in that mind. You got to get freed in your heart. God says, my daughter, my son, this is a season where the wind is coming. This is a season where the shift is happening. This is a season where my word is coming forth. This is my season where I am moving like never before. This is my season where I correct order in the kingdom. This is my season where I correct order in your home. This is my season where I correct order in your faith. I need you to stand on your wall like Nehemiah and not come down for a distraction. I need you to stand on your wall and say no distractions today. I need you to stand on your wall and say I'm going to serve in the day. I need you to not come off your wall for no pettiness. I need you to not come off your wall for no foolishness. I need you to stand on your wall and say no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. Don't you come off your wall for the Joneses and them. You ain't got time to argue with them. You ain't got time to protest with them. This is your season to get the justice and peace of God in your life. This is your season to get the blessing of God in your life. This is your season to get the promise and the purpose of God in your life. No justice, no peace. God says there's a promise. There's a remnant that's happening in this hour. God says, baby, I'm looking for those that's willing to stand by themselves. I'm looking for those that ain't looking for a hand clap. They will protest for themselves. I'm good, I'm great, and I'm chosen by God. He says, baby, I need you to protest for your peace in your life. I need for you to protest for the right standing with me in your life. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. So you have to get there in your heart. God says, this is the season where you feed yourself sound doctrine. You can't live on deluded word. Just look at the last five years. If it ain't work, it ain't gonna work, baby. You gotta get somewhere where the word ain't diluted. You know how you go to Starbucks, you order a, a tea and they dilute it with a whole bunch of water and it's about this much real green tea. We professional Starbucks girls, we know how they do it. God says this is your season when you can't have a diluted word. This is your season where you gotta have a concentrated word. This is your season when you gotta have a correcting word. This is your season you gotta have a word that's gonna build you. This is a season where you gotta have a word that's inside of you. This is your season for you to build that thing up inside of yourself. Well, you just say to yourself, when trouble comes your way, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a great I am. He is our father. He is the great I am. He is 
my daddy and your daddy too. God says, baby, I kept you at your lowest point and I'm keeping you at your highest point. He says, baby, I need your, your prayer life not to be diluted. You come to me sometime and I need you all the time. I need you in the morning, noon, and night. I need you all the time. I need to be in your life like never before. I need you all the time. I need you not to come up off that wall because I need you all the time. I have assigned you to a jurisdiction and I need you to stay the course in your jurisdiction. I don't care if they don't clap for you. I don't care if they don't say hi to you. Don't you come off that wall. You stand on your wall and don't you move. You be unmovable, unshakable, and stand on your faith. God says in this season, don't you come off that wall. In this season, you stand on that wall. And baby, when it gets tough, you lean on that wall. In this season, don't you get off your wall. You stand on your post. You believe what God says. You, you anoint your own self. Yes, God. Yes, God. Don't get off the wall. Don't allow the devil and his deception to change the course of your life. Pressure will be applied to try to stop you and your destiny. But God says, baby, as long as you stay plugged up in his air and his grace, you will get to that destiny. But you got to move out of the way so he can stand in the way for you. God says, in this season, this is your breakthrough. This is your breakout. God says, in this season, if they can't accept you, then you got to move on. They got to get comfortable around you. They don't like you. Guess what? They got to get comfortable in this season. You don't like me? Hey, girl, how you doing? Have fun. You just going to have to like me in this season. Because ain't not a thing that man or woman can do about it. I ain't coming off this wall. Don't tell me I ain't black enough. Don't tell me I ain't beautiful enough. Don't tell me my ditty box ain't good enough. God says, in this season, you got to know who you are. In this season, you got to preach to yourself. He said, don't you let the things and the distractions of this world get in your way. You know how the, the ism and the schism family come up to your door. Well, I didn't see you downtown. No, you, I was in my prayer closet. Oh, well, I, I, I didn't see you doing this. No, because I was doing that. God says, in this season, you got to know what, what's, what's about you. Amen. I had somebody tell me, you need to stop shopping here and there for, for racism. I said, baby, I'm still wearing my Gucci, Louis, and Prada. I ain't changing who I am for you. I got to keep moving how I move because I know the God that I serve. I'm not going to I'm not gonna alterate who God has called me to be. We've done too much alterations for other people, and your coat don't fit you the right way. He says, baby, stop doing alterations and let the coat fit you the right way. I made your coat for a certain period, and I need you to wear your coat. Stop trying to make alterations for other people. This is not the season of alterations. This is the season for authentication. God says, I need you to be authentic in all of your ways. I need you to be authentic in your prayer life. I need you to be authentic in your assignment. Stop trying to copy their prayer life. Oh, God says, this is not your season for that. I need you to stop alterating your coat, baby. I made your coat to fit you. I made your mind to move the way it does. I made you to praise me the way I did. Because I need you to be authentic in this way. If you just a shoe tapper, be the great shoe tapper. If you a hand clapper, be the great hand clapper. This is not a season for you to alterate for somebody else. This is not your season. Stop alterating your marriage for Kiki in them. It ain't real no way. So live your real marriage. If y'all go to Burger King on Friday, be happy at Burger King, baby. You still got 20 more dollars in your bank. God just stop perpetrating a fraud. I'm looking for some authentic people who have been called by my name, who will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. And I will heal the land. I will heal the land. I will heal the land. So God, we thank you. We honor you today, Father, that we will not alterate our mind. We will not alterate our faith. We will not alterate our walk, God. We will be authentic in all of our ways and in our mind and in our walk and our conversations, God. 
We release the broken bondage like never before. The bondage of not forgiveness. The bondage of I'm not good enough. God, we release that right thing off of our life right now in the name of Jesus. God, we don't want to live by bondage. We don't want to walk in bondage. God, we need to be authentic, Father. So God, have your way. We need to be authentic, God. We need to be authentic, Father, in the name of Jesus. We need to be authentic, God. God, we need to release those things, Father. We need to release those things that keep us out of your will and your way. Jeremiah was not that old, Father. But you said you knew him before he was formed in the womb. And God, you knew each one of these people, God, before they were formed in the womb. God, they need to release the stress off of their life. They need to release, God, the promises that have been broken, God. And need to stand on your word. God, this is the season of truth, God. This is the year of truth. God. We got to be truthful to ourselves, Father. And we need you to reign in this place like never before. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you, God. We need a fill up from you, Father. We need an unadulterated word, God. A non-diluted word, Father. We want the word from you and from your mouth, Father. We want you to say, well done, my faithful servant. And God, we need you like never before. So have your way. Have your way. For those of you that are online, you give God some hearts right now and put hashtag bondages are broken. Bondages are broken. I'm wearing my custom made coat. If my custom made is Kmart, baby, I'm wearing it because it's custom made for me. I'm no longer living up uh, the things of man, what man says I should do. I'm going to live in my custom ways, Father. Whatever you call me to my custom ways, God. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Sing it like you mean it tonight.
story is three days later. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. Oh, I forgot a part. They hung him high. They stretched him wide.
uh, you all are dismissed. We ask God to cover everyone uh, on their way home, Father, and just make their home much more warmer, God, much more peaceful in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Father, that you will continue to cover us in this season. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. You all are welcome to stay and just, just minister in his uh, presence. Uh, and you're, you're released to go as well. Thank you.